Well, good afternoon. It's a uh, lovely afternoon here in uh, the Seattle, Washington, and uh, it has it's been horrible rain for the last uh, you know, 24 hours or so, and it was horrible this morning, but it's broken out into quite a nice afternoon. Anyway, uh, what I wanted to, to show here was uh, uh, a couple of items. These are uh, ThinkJet. These are the original uh, ThinkJet printers. These are 2225 uh, a and I think 2225D. Now, you might ask, why do I have two of them? Well, I think it's best to step back and sort of explain what uh, I was thinking. Uh, what I wanted to do was I wanted to be able to have my instruments print uh, directly to a printer. Now, they can do a thing called uh, uh, become controller in charge for the uh, GPIB bus and then they can print directly to a GPIB connected device, like the plotters that uh, I had in the, my, some of my earlier videos. Uh, I had the plotter, so I thought, well, you know, it'd be great to have a printer as well. And so uh, uh, to do that, I went out and I bought, let me just put this guy aside. I bought this guy here, which is the 2225A. And we can see this guy here is a GPIB based uh, ThinkJet printer. So I got this and only paid about $25, $30 for it, I think. And um, uh, it was local, so the shipping was, uh, was very minimal. Uh, but uh, I got this and uh, I plugged it in, tested it, did the, the print test. Uh, I didn't have a print cartridge, but the paper moved and the head moved back and forth. I thought, you beaut, I got, uh, got a winner here. So I went and bought a uh, printer cartridge and I went and bought uh, some uh, uh, of the some of the tractor feed paper. This is all old school here, uh, you can see in here. So uh, I thought, great, I went and bought some of that and then I put it all together and I tried to print and nothing. So I looked into it and what it is, is, uh, you know, it, it, it seems to me that the problem with these printers was that while they're normally bulletproof mechanically, the printing itself is uh, corrosive. So let me show you what uh, I mean by that. And to show you what I mean, we're going to come back and uh, I'm going to just zoom in here with my other camera and you're going to be able to see uh, what's going on. Okay. So here you can see uh, the basic, the print head. This is where the print head uh, carriage is. And what this is here is this is a little bit of copper uh, flat flex, basically. And if you notice, you can see here that these little bumps where uh, the copper is supposed to meet the uh, print head have all been basically corroded away. And that was the failure uh, mode with these printers is that the ink itself is slightly corrosive. So when uh, you, so when you would uh, uh, get an ink spill, if you left it on this little copper uh, flat flex, it would eventually eat the copper away and that would stop the printer from working. Now, you could used to be able to get a uh, piece of the flat flex as a replacement part, but you can't anymore. And uh, a lot of the, the places look and say, well, you know, you can uh, go create a, uh, get something from a newer printer and then you can, uh, cut into your uh, assembly head and uh, your print carriage and socket it in. Well, what I actually uh, decided to do was to go and just simply, you know, these are cheap, so I just bought a uh, uh, replacement, or I spoke to the uh, the guy that sold me uh, this one and uh, got a uh, another one at uh, a discounted price, so that basically I got two for the price of one. And that enabled me to, that will, should enable me to take the center part out of here and replace that. So let's take a look at the other printer. So the second print I got uh, was a 2225D. Now this is an RS-232 based uh, printer. In fact, the uh, drink of choice today is just because uh, it's the afternoon, it's a bit of a decaf uh, coffee. It is a little bit of a sacrilege, but what I do is actually have uh, one cup of normal and one cup of uh, decaf, so sort of like two thirds of calf. Uh, anyway, uh, what I can actually do here, hopefully, is just simply take the mechanism part, the entire mechanism part out of this printer, 
which has a nice uh, uh, uncorroded or non-corroded uh, flat flex and then just replace the whole mechanism in here. So I don't need to change any of the guts, do any of the, the swap over of the printed circuit boards or anything like that. So with that in mind, let's uh, take the broken one apart first and see about how we get the, uh, uh, the mechanism out. Well, it's the uh, next morning, had to uh, uh, duck out for a bit. So now we're gonna get back to taking the uh, 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 base off or the top off and seeing about swapping that uh, middle piece there. So I think this is the right size. Yep. So let's uh, get in there. There we go. Okay, so let's turn this over. Let's see whether, okay. There we go. Oh, 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 be very careful. is a okay so oh. okay there is a uh, a little little connector in there so let's see if we can get in there and get that guy out Oh, I don't want to break the, well, the reality is I do have spare parts, so, okay. Okay, well, that was a little harder than expected, and there should be four bolts now, or four screws that have come out of the bottom here. Okay, and there we go. So this is the inside of the unit. Uh, you can see uh, what's going on here. You know, we have um, some national semi parts uh, in for the uh, GPIB adapter. This board, as we'll see when we take open the top of the next one, is uh, replaceable. Uh, and that's sort of how they do, they made the basic 2225 model and then they did all the different uh, uh, IO uh, operations on it. A little bit of uh, rust there. Ah, there we go. So what we're going to do is remove these three screws and those two there and then there is one on the bottom just here. So we will do that right now. Let me get that uh, guy again. So you can see that's a little little cover sits over the top of uh, the little plastic standoffs to uh, help, or the plastic mounts to help uh, the screw hold in without uh, pulling through the plastic. So now oh, I should be able to take off the earth 
Oh, man. Aha. Uh -huh. There's another torque screw over there. Here, and then we should just be able to there we go so that's that whole mechanism and we can see some of the ink grot that has uh, spilt now that ink has been the corrosive part that's um, gone and and damaged the the printer and so now that we have this out, let's see if I can get a, a good, if we can get a good zoom in on it. There we go. Okay, so there we can see the, you can see the contacts in there. You can see how they've been eaten away by the ink. And this is, um, I'm led to believe, the most common failure method uh, for this printer. And so uh, I'm just going to swap the entire print mechanism. And uh, that should give me a, a working printer. Let's zoom that back out. And we'll perform the same function or the same actions on the second printer. There. Now. Let's get those board connectors out. Out of the way. And then that should let me get into... flat flex connector. There we go. So let's put this over the side here. Now let's uh, let's get in and see and I'll show you the a good looking connector. And there you can see now, you can see the difference between the two connectors. You know, this one here, those little bumps are the little copper uh, flex that touches to the back of the uh, print cartridge. And on this one, they're in uh, good nick. So let's put this guy back in uh, the other printer. There we go. Okay. So we have to flip that up. And now this needs to be over 
the edge of the case before we put uh, we put the lid on. Okay. Okay, let's carefully turn this over. back in there. Okay, let's get our four big guys in here. Okay, so now let's put a cartridge in it and lock the cartridge into place. And then so let's hold the line feed down and we'll turn the printer on. And there we go, look at that. that over you can see we're now getting all the printing And there you can see, we got a full print. So the print head's working, that uh, connection. Let's plug it into the GPIB bus and print something from an instrument. Okay, so I just had to uh, reset the uh, printer address so that uh, it didn't clash. And now we're gonna print uh, a graph from my uh, 8563E. It's basically taking the output of um, the 8340B and uh, we'll see how that uh, looks. I don't quite have it lined up, but there you go. Let's zoom in a bit. And there you can see it printing quite well. You know, it takes a bit because it's an old printer, but uh, that's working. So uh, I'm quite happy with that now. So we'll get this uh, stuck in. I have 2,500 sheets of this because you can only buy it in 2,500 uh, sheet boxes now. So, uh, uh, that's great. I'll be able to uh, set up uh, some of my instruments now just to print directly to the printer instead of um, instead of printing to a uh, uh, you know, printing to an emulator. Anyway, hope you liked that. Uh, if you did, give it a thumbs up, and uh, I'll uh, catch you in the comments.